Hey everybody, it's Tamara. So today, actually the last couple of days, I've been thinking about this, um, this topic of being in a crisis of faith. So what does that, what does that look like for you in your life? Do you ever experience that you're having a crisis of faith? And what I mean by that, well, let me just tell you my e example. Um, and that is, uh, the other day, I went through several of my journals. I write a lot in my journals and stuff because the last several years I've been going through this journey. And I try to share through either videos or writings, books and stuff about what I've gone through and to share it because I believe whatever you learn, you, you teach. I believe in that. If you get something, you give it. So you don't hoard it. You don't keep it to yourself. And then that way, you know that everything you've gone through, it's not a waste. However, I will confess and say that sometimes it does feel like, what the heck? I went through all that for what? Because um, sometimes you can share it. Sometimes it'll make a difference for somebody else. And sometimes you feel like it hasn't done a thing. Well, um, I know I went through a period of a self-pity period of, and um, that wasn't very good, but um, it is. It's, it's, it's just the truth. Anyway, I was looking through my journals from years ago when this whole journey first started, which was back in 2011. I, yeah, about 2011. And I didn't find the books for 211, but I did find them for uh, 212. And so I began reading a couple from them. And I saw a lot of things in there. First of all, I saw um, the kind of writing I was doing, very immature, even though I've been a believer for years. But my writing of how I, you know, just emoting my emotions and my maturity as a, as a Christian was just, it was awful. But, you know, that's how it is when you're growing and you're learning. It's trial and error. It's falling down and picking yourself back up again. It's yelling and complaining. It's running away. It's all kinds of things. And I did a lot of that, a lot. And I wrote out a lot of my feelings and a lot of poor me, basically. Um, but what kind of got to me and where I say that my crisis in faith kind of showed itself was I saw that I received, you know, I, you know, I'm in the word and, um, excuse me, I pray, I, I, I pray a lot and I was learning a lot about prayer and I was learning a lot about, um, getting the, getting a word from somebody that was supposed to be from the Lord, or I would get a word in, the, in my reading and stuff and just thinking, this is it. This is what it means. And it's going to happen. And it's going to do this. And it's going to do that. I, I saw it and this is the word, this is the scripture. And, and I would expect it to be, I'd say, oh, it's going to happen. It's done. It's, it, here it is. And my words, they speak and all this kind of stuff, right? Well, back then I did not understand that God will give you, he will tell you the end at the beginning. What that means is he's, he tells you what he's going to do at the beginning. And then you might not see a hint of it for quite a while, sometimes for years. And you begin to get discouraged. Well, that happened a lot because I was learning. There was a lot of stuff. Now, God was giving me a lot of hints along the way. He was showing me things. And what that did was it built my faith. I would go through something and I would be emotionally, I would be devastated because I didn't understand. And so I would grow from that and my faith became stronger and I would go on to the next thing and I would learn from that and get into another kind of a crisis and I would get through that and I would grow and constantly get stronger and stronger. And I did. I got stronger and stronger. My faith grew and you wouldn't, you wouldn't think so, right? And that was where I was, you know, kind of confused because I was like, how, how come my faith is growing when the thing that I believe for hasn't happened, but yet... I, I believe and my faith is stronger. It just kept getting stronger and stronger and my love for God kept getting stronger and stronger. And I'm not saying that was easy because I did a lot of screaming and yelling and pouting and throwing fits and running and threatening to say, I'm not doing this and I'm out of here and, you know, and, and that kind of thing. But, 
um, over years, you know, I, I grew up and understand that this is all part of growing like a child, like when you, you are teaching your child and they have temper tantrums and then they get a little bit older and they stop it and then they begin to start talking to you like, you know, they're four years old, but they think that they're 10 or maybe they're four years old and they think they know everything um, anyway, but there's still that spiritual growth. But anyway, I started thinking about the promises and how over time, how could I be so green in thinking that everything that I read, every scripture, I just knew that was it. I just knew. And I would get these words, you know, these prophetic words from people and say, well, this is what's going to happen. It's done and believe. And, and um, I would think, oh, that song is meant for me. And that's meant for me. And that's the word. And that's it. And oh, I'm looking for it. And I'm ready. And I'm this and I'm that. And then it would happen. And I would be devastated. So this happened. I would see this in my journals over, you know, a period of time in the writing. And then, you know, certain things that happened in my life. And I would be so hurt. I mean, things, think a lot of stuff happened. And I'd be devastated by people's behavior and your belief in people and just being hurt. And I, and I saw that. And I saw in the beginning, and I'm not a crier. I'm not, but during the beginning of this, I cried a lot and I'd be sobbing and I'd, I'd just be so devastated. And then I felt like, where's the Lord in all this? I, you know, I'm, I'm believing in you, Lord. I'm trusting you. And, you know, I'm calling out to you and crying out to you and pouring out my heart to you and nothing's happening. And, and I'd be so upset for a very long time. And, and I wouldn't think I could get through it. And then over time, I grew past it. And some of the things I was reading in my journal, I totally forgot. Thank God. I, I, I forgot. But I, but what happened was I got through it. I became stronger. But I saw over one journal, which would, one journal would be, it would cover months. And then another journal would cover another set of months. And, and so on and so forth. So I started jumping around. I started jumping and I went from this journal to the next one, this one, because I, a lot of my writing just repeated itself. It just repeated itself, basically the same thing, same kinds of things, more of the same kind of lessons and so forth and, and complaining and whining on my part, not getting it, not understanding it because I was just immature. And then over time I got it. I began to see it. But what, what concerned me was I was growing, I was getting stronger, but what concerned me was a lot of these things that I believed, none of it happened, Nothing, none of it had come to pass. And so I was starting to think, well, if that wasn't God, that means that was my own imagination and that was disconcerting. And I thought, that's me. So what is, how do I know when God's really talking to me or it's my imagination? And I have a very good imagination. So I said, Lord, you're going to have to really help me out here because I know you spoke to me. I know you did because I wouldn't be on this road. I wouldn't be on this path unless I believed in you. So I had to spend a lot of time thinking about this. And so I started thinking, okay, what is it that I know for sure? What do I know absolutely for sure that I know without a shadow of a doubt that God had said? And then all the other fluff that I emotionally got myself all wrapped up in. Because if you start thinking about all the emotional stuff, you might as well forget it. Because we're not supposed to be conducting our lives with emotions because our emotions will trick us. And that's what happened. But, in, but if you know, there's a knowing. And that is, that is, that is believing because you, you know. And that's faith. And you know like you know you like you know. There are some things, there's some absolutes that he told me that I know for fact. So then I began to think, okay, so if I just lived off of those things, they're like five things, maybe four things, but they're, they're major. And if I just stuck with that, that's huge. And I can live off of that. Those are huge. And so my, my crisis, after a little bit of time, I, I had to really think about this because we're talking about volumes of journals where I just said, you know, I was repeating things over and over and over again, but it was part of my growth. 
And that's why I believe in having a journal because you can go back and see how much you've grown. And it was very um, uh, enlightening for me to see how much I had grown. And I was like a young girl in the, in, you know, in the spirit, even though it wasn't, it, it was like nine years, eight years ago, eight years ago or so that I really started in this path. And I wasn't a young girl then, but it was like the maturity of a very young, young Christian who just didn't understand. And I didn't understand, even though I had been a believer since uh, 1983, but I didn't know. So my crisis in faith allowed me to take a huge leap in my faith, my faith walk in making me a lot more mature and helping me to see how much more mature I had come, had become over the years. So with that, I can take everything that I read and I'm going to write in my new journal. I'm going to summarize everything that I that I read. And then I'm going to continue. But my writing will be different. And I decided that instead of writing all that emotional stuff that I used to write, I'm going to make that into a book or put that in my blogs or something. Because it doesn't really do any good for teaching anybody if it's just stuck in a journal. The journal before, the journals, were for my growth, which was great. And I, and I, and I think that everybody should have journals, should write out their stuff, their journey. Um, because you can see your growth. You can see your growth. And you can see um, where, you know, where you began. And should you go through a... a, a crisis in your faith you can see where it comes from you can see where you came from and where you are and you can see actually how much you have grown and that's a very good thing because if you begin to think that you're stuck and that nothing's happening read your journals and you'll see you have grown and something has been happening and you just didn't realize it and it's there it's all in the books I have more journals I have a lot more excuse me but what I saw from those first year, it's probably about a year and a half of scanning through the journals and reading some of the stuff. Um, and just that was very eye-opening. My emotions were all over the place. They were so raw and they were just, they, they were a mess. I was a mess, but it was good to see. You know, it was good to see how much I had grown anyway. There's a lot to be said about having a crisis in faith. And if you do have a crisis in your faith, that's good. Then you can go back and see where it all comes from. See how much you've grown. And you will and you will be very surprised. And chances are you're going to be very happy. Because there is growth. Major growth. And it means that you're just questioning some things. And when you question things, it means you're looking for the information. You're looking for knowledge. You're searching for more. You're, you're getting closer to God and you're seeking and searching. And that's a very good thing. Because I found myself going to God and saying, hey, I'm having a situation right now. And you need to help me out. I need to know what was you and what was me. And help me to figure that out. Because there's a whole lot of stuff that I thought was you. And it wasn't. So help me to figure that out. And that's when I realized, what do I know for sure? What do I absolutely know for sure? And I was able to build from that. And that was pretty incredible. Anyway, so um, you know, we all go through it some way or another. We all have our, our crisis in faith at whatever level that is, or wherever you are in your faith. We all experience it. But anyway, so I want to encourage you. That if you are facing that kind of a crisis in faith, it's okay. If you need to seek help from somebody, find somebody that you feel very safe with, that you trust. Find somebody that you can talk to, that you can that can help you. I used to say, you know, talk me off of the what was it? Talk me off of the um, what was it? Talk me off of the cliff. Talk me off of the cliff, because there was there was a couple times that I felt like I was there. Yeah, they they were pretty hard. That was, yeah, they were hard. But find that person that you can talk to if you need if you need somebody. Um, 
I, I went right to the source. I went to God because that was my problem. That was where my problem was. But find somebody if you need to or get right into your journal or pray. Get into 20 minutes or more and and talk it out. Work it out. Do whatever you need to do. Okay, so anyway, thanks for listening. I wanted to share this with you because it was really heavy on my heart. So anyway, I hope you are enjoying your summer days. It's been super hot here. And some of it I'm enjoying and some of it I'm not. Um, but anyway, I hope you're enjoying your summer wherever you are. And we'll talk again soon. All right, God bless you. Bye.